Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, we're gonna see if the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro is any good in 2022. I picked up this Space Gray MacBook Pro for a thousand bucks on Facebook Marketplace because I was looking for a second laptop just for general home use and a portable video editing machine. Because it's a secondary machine, I didn't want to spend too, too much money on it, but I wanted something that could hopefully do everything I wanted it to do. In terms of spec, it's a 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro in Space Gray. It has the Intel i7 7700HU quad core processor, 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a two gig Radeon Pro 555 graphics card, and a 256 gig SSD. It also has four Thunderbolt 4 ports around the sides. This MacBook design was originally released in 2016 to a lot of positive fanfare, but since then there has been a lot of issues with this design of model, namely around the heat from the Intel processor and of course the issues with the butterfly keyboards. The original owner of this MacBook actually got the keyboard replaced by Apple under warranty, so fingers crossed this is gonna work for us for at least the next couple of years without any issues. He also took really great care of this machine. Even though it's five years old, it looks like it is in brand new condition. And the battery cycle count is essentially brand new. It's only got a 22 cycle count. So the battery is almost like it was back in 2017. For a 15 inch laptop that is five years old, it is actually ridiculously thin and light. It only weighs 1.83 kilos. And I do love that Retina 15 inch display screen. The speakers on the MacBook are also phenomenal. They sound really loud, but they're also really bassy, especially for laptop speakers. The screen is more than bright enough, maxing out at 500 nits, and it does support DCI-P3, so it's got a great wide range of color for video editing and of course watching movies. It's just great to actually just consume content on. Apple has also been putting these massive trackpads on their devices for years, and I might even argue that it's a little bit too big, but it is honestly really nice to use. I am, however, not a big fan of the butterfly keyboard, and I'm glad that in their newer models, they have returned to a more mechanical style keyboard with a bit more depth. This 2017 Mac also has the touch bar, and even though I tried so hard to like it and use it, I just went back to turning it into the regular keys. So I don't think the touch bar is all that productive. And honestly, I sometimes hit it by accident because I don't have the physical keys and I press the brightness or the volume or the mission control. So really I would prefer, and as Apple has done, they've gone back to regular physical keys in the newer models. So let's actually talk about performance. Being a five-year-old Intel laptop, I didn't expect it to get the best benchmarking scores, especially compared to the M1 Max, but I did want it to do everything that I wanted it to do for home use and of course for basic video editing. I am gonna throw up a few benchmarking scores that I got on this laptop, which really did surprise me how well it still performs, but this isn't about benchmarks, this is about real-world performance. In terms of my real-world performance and usage of the MacBook Pro, I am actually finding it really hard to fault this machine as a daily driver. Thanks to the SSD, it still boots up really quickly and programs are loading and shutting down extremely fast. And I've actually never felt that it has any lag when running any operations that I throw at it. And I think you'd honestly be really hard pressed to find a discernible big difference between this and a 2022 model for just the basic everyday tasks. The 16 gigs of RAM in here have also proven to be more than enough for me, which is really good because there is no way of upgrading this machine to any more RAM. The seventh gen i7 processor in here did actually tend to get quite hot when I first picked up the machine to the point where I actually thought about returning it or selling it within the first week because it was just getting extremely hot, the fans were turning on, and it was just uncomfortable to use on my lap. Luckily, I turned to Reddit and there was a program that was recommended and I installed called Turbo Boost Switcher, which essentially disables the Intel Turbo Boost function on the processor, and this has made the MacBook so much more enjoyable to use Basically what it does is it stops from turbo boosting when it just runs on standard operations. And essentially what it means is the MacBook runs a lot quieter, but more importantly, it doesn't get hot under general usage. And now I can use it throughout a whole day and it doesn't get hot and the fans don't turn on. So really if it wasn't for the turbo boost switcher, I probably would have gotten rid of this laptop within the first week. The only time I actually notice the fans turning on now is when I turn off Turbo Boost Switcher when I do video editing, but that's okay to, to be expected when you are editing videos that you put it through a bit more intense processes, and that's when I usually have it on a desk anyway. 
Video editing on this five-year-old Mac has actually been better than I expected. It handles everything quite well. I'd mainly shoot in 1080p with a few graphics and transitions and effects on there. And all my videos are usually maximum of about 15 minutes. I don't really notice all that much lag, but sometimes it does stutter it for a couple of seconds. And exporting, it's usually done within 15 minutes. So for everything I need it to do, it has actually proven to be a very good performer. But I do recommend if you are looking at getting a 15 inch MacBook model, try and find one with that four gig graphics card because it will benefit you in the long run. Battery life on this has been extremely decent. Like I said, it only has a cycle count of 22, so that battery is essentially brand new. Honestly, I get around five or so hours out of general usage for this thing. And if I am doing video editing, that does drop quite substantially. But for me, five hours is more than enough for typical home usage. And I'm really never that far from a charger. The fact that I can use any of the USB-C ports on the left or the right of it does make it easier to charge, but I do think Apple going back to MagSafe with their new Apple Silicon models is a better option because MagSafe is just safer. If someone pulls on the cord, that laptop will be coming down with USB-C. MagSafe, of course, just disconnects. So being a 2017 model, it is still running and getting the latest Mac OS updates. It's currently running in OS Monterey and we're probably gonna get the next two to three years of Mac updates on here. So I'm not too worried about running out of the latest operating system and even in two or three years time when it doesn't get any more feature updates, I will still get three years of security updates. So this thing will be good for at least five or six years from today. Now, the big question is, would I recommend buying a 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro in 2022? And this is a hard one to answer because I think the answer is, it depends. When you can get a 2021 M1 MacBook Air on the secondhand market for the same price, except that MacBook Air is gonna come with Apple Silicon that performs better, runs cooler, gives you better battery life, and you will actually still get warranty with it. It's a pretty compelling reason to go for the M1 MacBook Air. My main reason for getting the 2017 was the fact that I wanted this as a secondary video editing machine. And for me, that 15 inch screen was just the one factor that outweighed it over the MacBook Air. I knew that the processor and the graphics would be good enough for what I wanted it to do. And the fact that the keyboard had recently been replaced means that I won't have to worry about that butterfly keyboard for a while. If you are looking at getting a MacBook in 2022, I would actually say the M1 MacBook Air is the better option for most people, unless you really want, like me, the bigger screen. If you do prefer that bigger screen, you don't care about Apple Silicon, and you're willing to take the risk on a butterfly keyboard, you will actually get some really great options on the 2017, 18, and 19 MacBook Pros because Apple Silicon has really driven down the secondhand market price on these MacBook Pros. So if this is the device you are after, you are gonna get yourself a bargain. But for most people, I would actually say go get the MacBook Air instead. For me, however, this MacBook does everything I want it to do and I can't see myself wanting or needing to upgrade for a couple of years. That is my thoughts, however. Let me know what you guys think of the 2017 MacBook Pro in 2022. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.